Have you ever wondered what penguins could teach us about managing and succeeding in change? Well, in this book review, you're going to find out. Let's go. What's up, peeps? Welcome back to Rebranding Safety. Rebranding Safety is a YouTube channel and podcast doing exactly what it says on the tin. We're to change the perception of health and safety. And we do that here on YouTube and we do that over on the podcast as well. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the like button and the bell and any button that looks like it does some really cool things on the algorithm. Thank you very much. Today we're talking about uh, Iceberg is Melting by John Cotter. It's also co-authored by Holger Raff Gerber. Let's jump into my thoughts. Okay, so our Iceberg is Melting changing and succeeding under any conditions. This book is a fable and a fable is a short story typically with animals that conveys a moral. Remember when you were a kid and it says what's the moral of the story? It's kind of like that. Personally, I love a fable so you can tell this book review is going to be biased before we even start. The book is authored by John Cotter. John Cotter is a professor emeritus I don't even know what that means, at Harvard Business School. Uh, he is often referred to as the foremost authority on leadership and change. And also co-authored by Holger Raff Gerber, who's a co-author also of a different book called That's Not How We Do It Here, and former executive at a medical products firm. So these two are heavyweights in the world of leadership, change management, etc. This version that I got was the 10th anniversary edition, which came with an added cool little extra of somebody interviewing viewing the authors and that was then recorded at the back of the book which I really really liked. The book itself is bro broken into three sections. You have the fable itself and then you have a section of kind of key tangible takeaways where they talk about the stories and their experience. They take some of the conversations that have inspired the fable and they've recorded, they, they kind of tell you those in, in real terms and also they break down um, the key kind of takeaways. So things like the eight steps, for example, that's broken down in a non-fable way, if that makes sense. I hope that made sense. It felt more sensible when I was, it was in my head. Anyway, and then you get the interview with the authors, which I really liked actually. I thought that was a cool little touch. Um, so yeah, three sections in the book, fable, takeaways, interview, which I kind of was a fan of. What I liked about the book, well, frankly, pretty much everything. It was right up my street. I love a fable. I love big writing on the page because it's nice and quick for me to read. You can see there the pages are not that big. The writing is quite big. It wouldn't take you very long to read this book. If you're a fast reader, I reckon a coffee and a cup and an hour or two sitting at home, you'd probably plow out this book. Uh, I also really love the absolutely gorgeous illustrations in the book of the penguins. So some particularly beautiful ones. Added note here, if you are reading the book with a young child, such as my, at the time, four month old baby, they love these photos, all the contrast in uh, black and white. So having her sit on my lap and reading this book, she was absolutely steely eyed. So added bonus, keeps your baby you know, focus on something, does everything in this book. The combination of the fable and the takeaways at the end, I thought worked really well. They complement each other. So it gave you some kind of context some relatability, a story uh, in, in the fable, but also something tangible to take away from that. I imagine you kind of reading this book and then trying to deal with a project or some change management, you'll probably skip straight back to the eight steps and then go, mm, how would that work in real life? And then that's what the fable is there for. For that reason, I think this book is one that you kind of have and don't really give away. It's one you keep on your shelf in your office, maybe in your bag, maybe your bag's a bit too much. You're not gonna to refer to this all the time. You're probably only gonna to refer to this when you're doing big change projects. Uh, but for that reason, I thought it was very clever how they did those two, um, those two sections. I thought it was a nice touch how um, throughout the book as you're reading, I'm going to find you an example here, I've highlighted it, the eight steps to change, hopefully you can see that, are underlined as you read through the book, which I thought was a really nice touch. I'm trying to find you another example. I don't know why you need to see two examples of an underlined bit of writing. But if you haven't seen the eight steps to change, you're going through and you're like, hmm, these are obviously important. So you might make a mental note, you might write in a notebook, or if you're you're an absolute weird, horrible person, you might even write in the book. Frankly, that should be illegal in my opinion. So there, what I liked about the book, let's kind of look into what I didn't like about the book. Let's just have a quick shout out to Paradigm Human Performance, our sponsors for Rebrand and Safety YouTube channel and 
podcast. Paradigm Human Performance are human organizational performance experts. If you know them, you know them. They're a great team of people. They run a webinar every other week on a Thursday at 2 p.m. called the Learning Organization Webinar. They built a fantastic little community uh, of which I'm happy to be part of. Um, and Teresa is a lovely lady doing some amazing work. And that company are what they say they are. They are full of human factors, human organizational performance experts. They do a great job of working and partnering with customers, help them take that next step in their evolutionary journey of risk management. So if you're looking for a company to help you onboard a load of those principles of HARP and, and how to get your humans and your organizations working better together, then Paradigm is the consultant for you. So go check out all their details in the description below, email, phone number, website, and whilst you're on the website, sign up to learn an organization webinar if you haven't already. What I didn't like about the book was actually nothing. This was right up my street. If anything, I read it a bit too quick. Um, I, I just, I loved it. I couldn't put it down. I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't really make any notes when I was reading it um, because it was just, I was just in it. It was so good. Um, I then recommended this book onto um, a little WhatsApp group I'm in, a shout out to Bill, the safety malcontent, who raised a very valid point that maybe the characters in there could have done with a little bit more depth in the fable, a little bit more explanation as to why they're so good at kind of managing this change. So without giving too much away, basically you go through the you go through the book and there's a team of people leading the change. This team are briefly kind of gone through. You've got Buddy, Fred, um, me, who's the person doing it, Lu Lu Luis and, and, and Alice. They're briefly kind of explained. And when I say briefly, like really briefly, for example, Buddy, boyishly handsome, not the slightest bit ambitious, well-trusted and liked by almost everyone, brackets, maybe your wife likes him too much close brackets, definitely not intellectual heavyweight. That's actually just reminded me, actually one of the other things I liked about this book, it's really funny. There's some really good bits in here, like there's a penguin that carries a suitcase and they totally just break the, is it the fourth wall? And they totally break that and say, yes, I know it's stupid for a, a penguin to be carrying a suitcase, but just go with this. Like it's, it's really cleverly written, the book. Anyway, Bill made a very valid point that at some points it says, so for example, Alice spoke to these people and boom, they're on board. And it's like, well, what makes Alice so special? Why was Alice good at doing that change? Um, which is a very valid point. I kind of think that maybe the book would be like 500 pages bigger if they actually did that. Um, but it is a valid point. You just kind of could come away thinking, well, they're just very special people. Um, but yeah, that, I thought that was a valid point. I didn't really pick up on that as I was going through, but when Bill said it, I was like, yeah, fair enough. That's it, that's a good point. Shout out to Adam Johns who recommended this book to me. Thank you very much, Adam. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Absolutely think any safety professional, any manager, any leader, any project manager should be reading this book and understanding the eight steps of change because I thought it was great. So in summary, totally recommend this book. If you want to buy it, click the link below and you can get yourself this book via Amazon affiliate link and you can help us out because we get a little bit of a kickback from that. Thank you very much. Okay, peeps, hope you enjoyed this book review. If you did, let me know, hit that like button, put a comment below. If you've read this book, let me know what you thought of it. I hope this has helped you decide whether you wanted to purchase the book or not. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like. I'll catch you next week, safe.